Hello, Curious Wanderers, and welcome to my newest video. This one is a twofer. Um, I just wanted to show here real quick. This is the fluid that I use, in case anyone was curious. Um, the masking fluid, I mean. And uh, yeah, so to, this video is a twofer, because I'm trying to compromise. I find it takes a lot longer to produce paintings uh, when I'm filming, because uh, I'm focusing on this one painting. So, I thought to compromise, um, you guys would get to watch two paintings being filmed at the same time. So that way I get to paint two paintings at the same time and be a little more productive. So this is experimental, we'll see, I might not do this every time, but let me know what you guys think. Is this uh, nice? Like, do you guys like being able to watch two videos or do you guys think that it's too much going on at the same time? So let me know. Um, but but yeah, so these are two different works. Um, the one on the uh, well that you can see on your left is supposed to be uh, um, like a fawn girl, and then the one on the right um, was inspired by the feeling of like listening to music. So I guess pretty straightforward themes in that sense. And uh, yeah, so I'm practicing painting faces in a variety of different ways. So I'm still working on uh, my uh, like straight on image, like when you're looking at a face like straight ahead. Because um, I feel like everyone has their preferences when it comes to uh, drawing faces. Like some people might be really good at profiles, some people might be um, really good at three quarter views or head on like this. Um, I really like three quarter views uh, and that's what I, when I was starting drawing and all that, it was almost always in a three quarter view because I feel like, um, and this could just be me, but in a three quarter view, I feel like I have a little more um, room to be imperfect versus when you're doing head on like this, if you're not symmetrical, it really like is noticeable. So I find it more challenging head on like this. Um, so yeah, so basically when you're, um, as a very good, uh, coach back in the days where I did sports in my life, um, back in high school, I, I did, uh, a little bit of judo, um, something very, uh, interesting and important that the coach taught you is if you're bad at something, that just means you have to do it a lot more, you know, so like, it, um, practice, 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 right? If you only practice what you're good at, then you kind of stagnate, right? Anyway, so <laughs> that's why um, I'm doing a few face studies. Would that be a, an easier way maybe to understand it? But yeah, I'm doing a lot of uh, uh, face studies so that I can like have it down pat. I did galaxy studies for a while where most of my paintings were galaxies and like <laughs> things like that. I get into these modes because it's just like I wanna I wanna do it until I feel comfortable with it and then I move on to other things and then I'll do that till I'm comfortable with that and then one day I'll stop practicing. <laughs> um I, I don't know, I'm one of I'm I guess I'm just one of those artists who I always feel like everything I do is practice. Um but hey, you know what? I don't think that's a bad thing, right? I feel like uh, we're always learning, and you're always uh, getting better, and... Because if you were good at everything right away, then wouldn't you get bored? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't mean to get philosophical today. Um, yeah, so... There are two different paintings. They're not supposed to go together or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to be a little more productive, so... Um, they're un they're unrelated to each other, except for the fact that they're both very front-facing faces. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying that, aren't I? Front-facing faces. Um, kind of like mug shots, I guess. <laughs> so I'm working on my mud my, my mug shots, I guess. Um, but yeah, except for that, they're they're very different. Like um, I just really love to do like. Um, humans that aren't quite humans so like for example like the fawn is something that I really enjoy like that style of having like something in between human and like some sort of mythical creature or um, 
like I love fawns, centaurs, mermaids, um, things like that. So just fantastical creatures. And I wanted to do a different facial expression too. Um, so like they both have very different. Well, I, I, I hope so, but very different facial expressions. Like the uh, the fawn is a little more like, you know, and then the <laughs> the other one is is more serene. Um, I tried to do a bit more of a um, closed eye on the one on the right. We can't see it right now. We will see it later. But I feel like it it might have come off a, a little like um, oriental or whatnot. Like, but. That, that was not the intention per se, like, it, um, it, I was trying to close her eyes a little bit and I think I didn't, I didn't convey that as well as I wanted, but you tell me, maybe I'm just being too hard on myself. Oh, the best part, part wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding, just me, <laughs> but, oh yeah. Pulling off the mask. This one was fun. The other one is a little harder because it had like a lot of little pieces. I used a mask. Like her mouth probably looks a little strange right now, but I actually did put a mask over her teeth so that her teeth would stay white and a little bit in her ears. And I also did her eyebrows because <laughs> I wanted the, I wanted her to have white hair. So um, I also wanted her eyebrows to be white. So that's why I did that. Hey, you know. He, you don't have to mask only in one spot, right? Just like here, I did the reverse. I did not put a mask um, over her eyebrows because I wanted her eyebrows to match the like nebula of her hair. <coughs> it's funny because I feel like the other painting got a little more painted at the beginning since the hair was the mask part, but. Uh, So when it comes to white, I find it can be a little hard to shade white because you're like, what do I? <laughs> you can't go lighter than light, right? So I, I uh, went for a more wintry look. So I, I shade. I like to shade white with blue. Cause maybe it's just because I'm from Canada and snow is such a um, <laughs> reality, especially this time of year. Um, I don't know when you're watching this, but it's. Uh, it just started uh, February for me right now, so snow is something that I'm used to, so I, I always love that like blue shimmer that snow can have, so I tend to want to shade white, like almost anything white in that, in that way, because it's like pretty to me. And uh, yeah, so here I'm working on just adding a bit of background, like a backsplash, but I just went with a gray. Because I felt like if I went black, it might be a little too, it might, I don't know, it would be too intense and you wouldn't be able to see the wires. And so I just went with a gray for the background, that way the colors feel more colorful. And uh, yeah, but at the same time I didn't want like a white background. I, I wanted like a, I originally was going to do a black background, but I, I went with gray. And uh, practice. What I'm doing here, I don't know if you can tell, is I take my brush, I clean it, and then I smooth out the lines. Because when you put down watercolor colors, now this is, it can be different depending on how you paint, but when I put down watercolor colors, I feel like when it dries, it leaves like a little line of pigment, like a, like a contour line, the way it dried. So what I do is I wet my brush, if you have this issue you can try this. I wet my brush and I have a clean, like I have it majoritarily clean. And um, I just rub the line like between the light and the darker color that is created. Like you can see around her cheek of the music listening girl. Um, her upper cheek there. I'm probably going to smooth that a little later in the painting. But um, <coughs> those harsh lines like that, if you pass over them um, and rub them with a wet, clean brush, they tend to, uh, they'll blend. It, it'll, it'll make a transition. 
So that's my, that's what I've figured out to be able to create a transition between um, tones. Because, uh, yeah, I just experimented around and I thought that's what worked best. Here I'm doing some highlight. That was a um, Sakura Jelly Roll uh, pen. It's just a pen I bought at Michael's. They, um, I've seen other uh, artists on YouTube use it. So, see there, I just passed over the cheek and I'm doing that on the forehead too. Um, that's with the clean brush to like smooth out those lines a bit so they're less harsh. But yeah, what I did here, because I think this is fun. I mean, it's not like it's not like super fancy. It's like a sharpie, but um, I have these metallic sharpies, and I really like using them. So I made the headphones actually be silvery metallic, and then I wanted like the gold on the top part that goes on your head. And then here I'm using some watercolor pencils to uh, do a bit of contouring and like kind of like line art. I feel like I fall somewhere in between line art and not line art. It's like, I like to do a, a, a pretty um, gentle line art, so I use the watercolor pencils for that. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like every time I do a painting of a face, I'm experimenting with different ways of doing uh, the eyes. Because uh, I don't mean the style of the eye per se, but I feel like um, I never know what's best for drawing eyelashes. I know that's probably a really random thing to be uh, conflicted about. Like, uh, I don't know if, if anyone else finds eyelashes challenging. <laughs> um, like, here, I tried, like, on the squinty, squinty eyes, like, on the, like, um, more relaxed eyes that I was going for, I tried doing the eyelashes almost like eyeliner. Right, but like on the deer, I wanted those really long deer, eye, deer like eyelashes. So I did more like the flared up eyelashes. Like here, you can see the line work. So I don't know. I kind of like both looks, you know. So anyway, that's everything for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can catch all my next videos.